I'm having my guests who are really making my morning here. <laughs> but anyway, we'll be, I'll be introducing <laughs> them in just a few. Uh, today on youth and politics, of course, we'll be looking at census. Are we ready as a country? And of course, the persons involved, that is the government and Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. Are we ready for this? That's the question we'll be looking at later on. But let's first of all look at the background history of census in Kenya. It began in 1948 when the first census was conducted, of which it was reported that it was not released. That's the story that has been really, really emerging. And of course, looking at this year's budget for the census, it's, sorry, as, as uh, I wish to apologize, all alone I said 1.18, it, it's 18.5 billion shillings. And that the current stand as per it is. And of course, on Friday 16, that is last week Friday, the president, of course, officially launched the exercise at Kenyatta International Convention Center, noting that the exercise will help the government in both planning and decision making as per the results that will be given. So when is the exercise supposed to begin? It's supposed to begin on the 24th, that is days coming Saturday all through to the 31st of August. And that gives me the opportunity to introduce my guest as we look at census this year. Uh, of course, from my right, it's uh, Muthiora Kariara. Thank you, Alex. Nashkuru. Yes, yes. How does it feel being here for, the, for some other time also? Well, it's always a joy to get an opportunity to interact with the young people in Kenya. Yes. I know they are tuned in because this is their station. So Great. it's always a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome, awesome. And of course, uh, next to him is none other than Ogunda Kayesi. Yes. Karibu sana. Pleasure to be here. Yes, yes. Pleasure to be with you, Alex, and former presidential candidate yes. in last election. <laughs> yes, yes. This is a great man. <laughs> yeah, he's a great man. It. Yeah. Anytime he has been here, uh -huh. it's been a big blessing to us. His of course. wealth of knowledge, wealth of wisdom is just a bundle of everything. Wow, that's awesome. For the first time, guys, I'm having people live on air. I'm mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's TV is going to be awesome. Usually, find it like it's so. I wish, I hope it's not end up like chaotic. You know, it usually ends up like we cannot agree on this particular issue. I hope it still continues. Well. <laughs> the golden handshake on studio. <laughs> that, of course, yes. is because one thing I've advocated for mm -hmm. is let us look to expand the discourse. Yes, yes. Allow me to express myself, yes. get to hear what my ideas are. Yeah. As young people, mm. we've got to challenge our intellect. We can differ in opinion, mm. in ideas, but then we shouldn't take it too far so as to get physical or violent. Right. Yes, and Alex, we don't have to agree on everything. Uh -huh. We cannot uh, disagree at times. Uh -huh. We also don't have to disagree all the time. All right. So long as we have ideas, we are independent people who mm. think independently, who have the ability to express yes. their own. So if we see the point of convergence, we converge. Mm -hmm. If there's a point we should diverse, we get on our own points. All right. So long as we think we are right. Men full yes. of wisdom yes. here yes. at Y254. And of course, you are a third person, of course. We want to invite you, of course, to interact with us on our social media platforms. Of course, we are looking at census. Najwa kuna wasiwengi sana home wako like nakasirikia chief ni kiwa home. That aside, for now, <laughs> we'll be looking at that, of course, with my guest. But to begin it, do you think, of course, you'd mentioned something earlier on, but I wanted to say, Tony, do you think as Kenyans, and of course involving the government also, are we ready for census? Well, Kenya has never been ready for anything, to say the truth. All right. But then, because there are programs that the government has to run, mm -hmm. we are forced to play ball as they come through. Mm -hmm. I'll take you back to the Huduma number mm -hmm. phenomena that we had. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we were not ready because public participation had not been done. Kenyans had not been sensitized as to why we needed to do the Huduma number. But then, since the government had rolled out this program, we went through it. To date, we are here to see the results or the benefits of that. So the census, it's scheduled that we will do it after every 10 years. Mm -hmm. So 10 years have lapsed. We must head into the census. They allocated funds for the same because they believe we need to do this exercise. And it does help with the mm -hmm. planning. So we have to be ready. That's the one thing I have to say. We, we will be coming at the planning issue, and of course, where we need to have census. But something probably you've just mentioned, it's something that really raises my concerns. As Kenyans, we are not usually ready. But my thought would be, uh, there's that uh, ideology that people have, like the constitution, the 2090, the 2010 promulgated constitution, it raises a lot of concerns because people never read, most people, let me say, most people never read, they say to Mr. Mel. Yes. Do you think it's a weakness that as Kenyans we have? 
Well, a lot of us, and this is painful to say, are ignorant. They delegate to the politicians some very important roles. Yes. Like, for instance, if you asked people, why are we doing the census? They will tell you because the government says so. When in fact, we know even at home, mm -hmm. for you to be able to do whatever projects that you need to do, you need proper planning. And to do that, you need statistics. You need to have the right figures. Mm -hmm. So we need to not delegate important duties mm -hmm. to our leaders because most times, selfish interests come in the way. Now, right. that said, mm -hmm. let us not make it light that this exercise is important because we need the right figures to be able to plan accordingly. We've been working with estimates for way too long right. and we need to get this right. Mm -hmm. Why I said we will have to be ready because it's a government pro program mm -hmm. is because we need to have prepared differently. Yes. As the young people involved in the exercise, mm -hmm. as the citizens, what did we need to do before the government got ready? Those are questions we should have addressed yes. before we uh, got Alex, here. Alex, you've asked him two questions that uh, I want to merge and, and handle as one. Whether we, Kenya is ready for, for this, for this uh, census mm -hmm. and whether we delegate important duties for others to do for us. Uh, Kenya is an economically aggressive country. Mm -hmm. From top the government officials to local Manaiji. Like now, if this, uh, this census thing was accompanied by, say, each house they enter, they will give like 2,000 or something, <laughs> we would be very ready for it. <laughs> like people would be jeering, Kuche, 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 let us come. People would be very ready for it. Mm. But now, because people don't see the immediate, immediate financial uh, mm. the capabilities that comes with it, mm. people are reluctant and say, yeah, how is it going to help me anyway? Uh, they can mm. even cheat. They can even... Uh, can do anything. Mm -hmm. And about the delegation of duties, like, no, I was around, very much around and active in university politics when, mm -hmm. when, uh, when uh, no, that was secondary politics, mm -hmm. when uh, they were counting people in 2009. Yeah, not, not counting people, the constitution, whatever. When they were telling people to read, 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 read. Mm -hmm. like every government officials come and say, mm -hmm. read and understand. Don't say yes or no before you read and understand. How was that going to help us financially, like immediately? How was it, go was it going to help <laughs> us? We voted for some people to go read for us, like we, the people okay. of Nyanza, were okay. saying. Baba mesoma kasema ni mzuri. So, ata ni soma, ni siposoma. It's good, because Baba said, so, yes. Is it a weakness that we have as Kenyans? Um, no, but we delegated some people to do some things for us. So why should we bother <laughs> doing it again for ourselves? <laughs> and especially now that. The, there are people, so many people who are mm. illiterate, and that was a big booklet. Mm -hmm. Like, you are doing it, you're going to read it, and you don't have exams to do after yes. that. Yeah? And you, nobody is going to pay you for reading it, for that matter. And somebody has read it, somebody who is really interested in it, and who has your political interest at hand, mm -hmm. has read it and said it is good. So people say, oh, he said it's good, so we'll see. It. All right. Yes. Yeah. The, 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 the issue yeah. I want us to mention because both of you have agreed on one thing about the lack of inclusivity. The Building Bridges Initiative just completed its uh, sittings uh, of the public, yeah? And one of the nine-point agenda was inclusivity. Yeah. Do you think we are really, the government, or rather us as people, we're being included in all the government's projects? There is talk about inclusivity. Yes. But when it comes to action, it really isn't there. Right. You cannot put a hold on it. It's true that the BBI panel went round the counties gathering views from Kenyans. And it's better than the other initiative that's out there, the Punguza Mzigo, because right. at least here they had nine points and they were gathering views on the same. But mm -hmm. then for this other one, people locked themselves in a room came out with a proposal of a bill, and then they are running with it. Now, that aside, if we go back to the census talk that we had started, we knew it was coming. The government planned for it. The players in there, because of whatever benefits it brings, they got ready for it. All right. But then you've seen across the country, 
young people coming out to say, I applied for that job, I deserve to get it, I should get it, but someone else who's not from my locality is the one that got it. Which means we did not prepare for it. Because if we did, we would have remembered, okay, we have a very corrupt government. So when it comes to hiring, they're not going to hire competently. So what could we have done? We could have mobilized, we could have organized as youths. And this is something um, requesting our young people to do. Come together. Team up. Yes, because the biggest number is 135,000 enumerators. Mm -hmm. There are <coughs> millions of young people out there, mm. and so they can't fit amongst these numbers. Yes. But because corruption will run the day at, at some point, mm -hmm. what we needed to do is come together, nominate from amongst ourselves, give these names to the assistant chiefs so mm -hmm. that they do not have the leeway to choose their relatives like right. we have seen them do. Yes. So we did not prepare mm -hmm. to take part yes. in the exercise, and that's why we've seen disruptions here and there. So that's uh, number one. Number two, mm -hmm. you've had a call from leaders that you need to go back to your constituencies to be counted. Mm -hmm. How many people are ready to do that? Who's doing the logistics to make sure that these people go back to mm -hmm. their villages to be counted? Mm -hmm. So preparations on the side of the Monanchi are not where they should be. So when you talk about inclusivity, we have a weakness there. Right. But the talk, of course, is out. And you have brought in something that I wanted, I wanted us, of course, also to mention. And of course, I want uh, Mr. Nguda to respond to these. There have been issues with how the employment was done. And of course, uh, just to bring it uh, clear, there are 195,000 enumerators that were employed, 27,000 content supervisors, and of course, 2,700 ICT experts. Out of all these, there have been issues, of course, you know, from Kiambu and all over the country, some, some, some parts of the country, that the process that was taken was not transparent. How do you make chiefs employers? Chiefs? <laughs> chiefs of all the people, Alex. <laughs> chiefs. You, it, there's nothing. There's, there can't be clarity where chiefs are involved. You know Why those not? guys. You know mm -hmm. those guys. Yeah, every sitting, they, st they sit with, from my village, they sit with some elders, some village elders, mm -hmm. which are not even picked democratically. He picks them. So he helps them in funding the corruption, those people. So those people with every little sitting, like somebody sues you to them, it's like they have their own court, their own mm -hmm. small courts there. If you are sued, you give the, the wazir something to eat first before they even hear your case. When you are the accused, maybe wrongly accused and all that. Mm -hmm. So I, I saw the comment on something leaked on the internet of the column where the census employment and now mm -hmm. the chiefs, the chiefs comment yes, area. I had mentioned that, you, I had seen that you, actually. Yeah, you saw the comments mm -hmm. of the chief. Not a member of us, not a member of this community, has a criminal record, yes. very lazy, mm -hmm. uh, ran, away with, ran, ran away with somebody's daughter. Was <laughs> like all those who are there now, the comments running on. Yeah, on right. chiefs. yeah those guys are, most of the time, they are not positive. Uh, and, but again, but, uh -huh. and again, uh, because of the corruption my friend is mentioning about, mm -hmm. yeah, you could get, uh, most of those who got those jobs are, teachers, civil servants, those who already have employment. But the court, but the court actually know. last week said, uh, the, if, if possible, we can even stop the, the, the census because they said actually, if there's any civil servant yes. who is on census, yes. they should be out of the system. Yeah, but why did they, how did they even get there in the first place? When some, mm -hmm. From my village, I have so many graduates who have, don't have jobs. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they get it? Why should a teacher who is on government payroll get a job a job, a, a temporary job. Well, who, by the way, we will be teaching at the time, we will be enumerating people. I understand it's night, it's night time. Mm -hmm. But should you be making schemes of work at that time instead of taking jobs that should be belonging to you? Uh, le le let, me, let me ask something probably uh, to you. Let me tell you one mm -hmm. thing. I yes. mobilize people from my village, the, the, the graduates who don't have job, mm -hmm. to go for the training, even if they were not taken. To go for the training and get trained because that job rightfully belonged to them, and if they are sent out, they go out with those teachers, with everybody. It worked. Those guys from the county reorganized mm -hmm. the list and now they took the right people. I told those people mm -hmm. to go to training where they have been picked or not. And they went. Yes. And uh, that's how they were let me, let me ask this probably just to you, Mr. Muthiora. Yes. Don't you think chiefs are the best people to pick people because they know people from the local areas? That's where they are chiefs. That's not how it works. And that's why we are looking 
to amend the constitution on some things. Look at how the hiring at the counties has been done. Nepotism is at its highest level today mm -hmm. than it has ever been. Why? Because the people on the ground are the ones doing the hiring. Mm -hmm. So if you leave it to the chief, he's going to pick people based on his relationship with them. And mm -hmm. money. Yes, of course. Now, mm -hmm. there's something he just said about how decisions are passed at the mm -hmm. chief's office. Mm -hmm. Something he didn't mention is, mm -hmm. it's not just the accused that's mm -hmm. asked to give something. Yes. Even the person who is reporting a matter also has to facilitate the sitting. So with that kind of corruption, mm -hmm. nothing good can come out of it. The best thing they could have done is just centralize this recruitment process. Mm -hmm. Let it be done nationally. Let people apply. Let everyone have a fair chance. That's number one. Right. Number two, he's spoken about how he asked people to go and invade those spaces. Yes, of course, sometimes we need to do such things, mm -hmm. but then we don't have to wait until it gets there. What we need to do as people who have been through <coughs> school and have a bit of information is to organize in advance we can even go to court, get an injunction to stop a process when it does not meet all the tenets of yes. the Constitution. So one thing he's confirmed is that young people are willing to follow mm -hmm. guidance when it's given, like he said yes. he did give. Mm -hmm. So let leaders like him go out there and mm -hmm. give information to our young people so that we take the right action before it's too late. Uh, but pr just to bring us here on board, uh, let's understand this, that the enumerators were being taken by, or rather were being chosen by the assistant chiefs. Yes. And the content supervisors were being chosen by the chiefs themselves. Mm. For the ICT, actually, I think it was district commissioners, if I'm not wrong. Mm. Yeah. And in all these, you're trying to say there's corruption involved. Yes, yeah. at every level. At every, uh, assistant chief, chief, whatever, you can't, but, uh, for me, the best way that I think there can be transparency on some of these jobs is maybe to organize uh, like some committee poll polling station. And then those committees choose their people from those polling stations. Say, if you want three people or seven people per polling station, we are giving you a, based on needs, based on merit, and based on uh, maybe the character, your character. Mm -hmm. in, they know people, they know people who are there. And it's a committee, not one person show, like the chiefs running all the show. So they say, I'm giving you uh, Alex, I'm giving you this person, we are giving you this, so take those employees, those are our people. That can be more transparent. That is, that is now where the participation and involvements come in. Mm -hmm. If I were the president or somebody, mm -hmm. I will be one, but there will be some a president <laughs> of this country at some point of You're life. You're planning to Yes, I, yeah, I will. So that's, it will be my running mate. It will be <laughs> run for running mate. So uh, that's how we will, that's right. how we will organize things. Mm -hmm. Like there are people who mm -hmm. are not on permanent basis. Maybe you run the show for one year, then we have another committee, one year, one committee, one year. So mm -hmm. if you want something based on, on the village, Mm -hmm. We give you the mandate we to have attention. as a committee to mm -hmm. choose your people from there. Those who got it this time round don't get it again next time round so that it's rotational. That is the best participation that I, I know can work. Okay. Right. Something we need to acknowledge is that mm -hmm. opportunities and resources are scarce. Mm -hmm. In the country? Yes. Mm -hmm. 135,000 enumerators across the nation. Mm -hmm. That's a very small number, so there's no way every young person who was applying for this job was going yeah. to get it. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there is logic in the argument that we need to hire people from a particular locality to mm -hmm. do the census within that locality. But then technology is advancing. And sometimes to find your way, you don't need to know a place. You yes. can use GPS yes. and such technological advances. Mm -hmm. So we do not have to limit ourselves that we have to work in the areas where we come from. Mm -hmm. What we need is for this process to be transparent mm -hmm. and to give everyone a fair chance. So again, it goes back to mm -hmm. how prepared are we for yes. whatever opportunities that are coming. Mm -hmm. This was just one. It has been done as we've seen. And of course, remember, if you want to collude and you're in your locality, it's very easy. 
So talk about the integrity of the process as well. That's why we need to let professionals do their job, but when they are doing their job, let them do it the best way that it can be done. It was not right for the assistant chiefs and chiefs to be left to handle these. Right. We have a public service commission. Committee, yes. And some important roles such as these mm -hmm. should be handled by such. There are those who are selected nationally. Mm -hmm. They should find a mechanism to cascade that all the all way, way down. to those lower levels so that you do not make light of something as important as a census exercise. Because people will say these figures were cooked when they were not. Or in some places they will deliberately be altered to fix mm -hmm. certain narratives that politicians want and there's nothing we can do about it because the whole process was All right. Let, advised. Let's, let's get in already deep inside into the, into the census thing and this is the first paperless exercise in Kenya. Do you think we will give some accurate results considering even with the previous one in 2009 there are speculations and allegations that it was not that certain of the results. What do you think? Did we even have the official figures in <laughs> 2009? Mm -hmm. Can you remember any figures like the official release of census results and all this? There were some monkey games in it, a lot of it. They were saying in Somali, um, some people crossed the border and became counted this time round. The, the, the problem with this, Alex, is that we really politicize it. It doesn't come like a planning thing. It's politics things. I was in in uh, Western Kenya last week during some camp meetings, some mm -hmm. SDA, and SDA are having something called camp meetings right. in August, every August. So camp meetings is that a church organizes where people go and camp in church for a whole week, and uh, they call guests from, we were called from here, from Nairobi, a singing group, and we were there. And the chief made a very careless statement that I got worried Chief said that because we are in a camp meeting, it's happening all over mm -hmm. the world. So because we have a camp meeting, we are lucky because we have guests around us, and these guests will be counted here. So our numbers will be bigger because this... So that stupidity, as if other places don't have the same thing. And another thing, it's... It, assume that when you are counted in a certain area and that area is perceived to be bigger and all that, then there are some advantages that come with it. And it also comes with CG votes, Zita Kwamingi Uko and all yes, that. Of course, we'll be looking at that later on. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the politics that surround it, the yes. whole of it, mm -hmm. is like making it, diluting it, and mm -hmm. making so many expectations out of it. Mm -hmm. And again, I do ask myself because... Uh, you know, there are deaths registration and birth registration. Every time a child is born, there's a notification card. Every time a person is buried, there's burial certificate and all that. And those statistics go up to national level. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why don't they extrapolate all this from now the census, the last census, how many births, how many deaths, now we have the number. Why do we have to go through all this? It's like some animating exercise that is politicized, that is... Uh, like they use it like for economical uh, advantages and all that, but uh, I see a lot of problems in it. Are we really advancing or are we really going backwards? I think we are making progress, albeit too slow. Right. As a government, mm -hmm. or if I was to be head of government, I think this would be the last census that should be conducted yes because technology has advanced mm -hmm. today almost every bath is registered yes that's what i said so going and every forward, death is also registered yes going forward w with the introduction of the huduma, huduma number, number yes. and all these other registrations that have been going on there may be need to rethink the scrapping of these decade-long census that we keep doing now of course, you know the repercussions, mm -hmm. and that is, for instance, guided by our constitution, there are constituencies that, if the census is done right this time round, will cease to exist. Now, a scientific process would guarantee that that process is foolproof. Right. But if we follow the same methods mm -hmm. we've done before, mm -hmm. we'll not get the results that we need. 
So what we need is to follow a very methodical process going forward. After we count people this time round, we will say from next year, yes. all the births and deaths that will occur will be aligned with our statistics. Every new job entrant will be recorded. Right. Every change in the demography of Kenya will be recorded down. And that will help so that we don't have to wait for 10 years to have the statistics to plan for the next phase. So we need a uh, continuous process. Alex, yes. when I will be president in, in 2042, <laughs> you know what I'll do? <laughs> I'll make a, a, a live update on internet where you go and see in Migori County or in uh, Kirinyaga County, three children have been born right now, like Pahawa, three children born, seven children born, like it's updated. You go there and see, oh, this, this, these uh, figures are rising, like, you know, so that by the time, by the end of the month, mm -hmm. you know how many children have been born, how many people have been buried and all that and all that. How many people have got jobs? Mm. How many people have, have acquired new cars? Like this live, 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 like we do live stream of this TV. Mm. There should be live stream of, of national no. statistics. Okay, so uh, it can work. It doesn't have to wait for 2042. 42. No, the they statistics don't want to do it. It's he's me talking we'll about uh, already exists. Right. KRA knows how many cars are registered every day. Yes. Mm. The internal the ministry for internal mm -hmm. they security. know how many people are born and how many die mm -hmm. all this data mm -hmm. needs to be aggregated mm -hmm. then what's the essence and of this physical counting well mm -hmm. sometimes we say people have to eat mm -hmm. and that's why they would push for this to happen right now when they say we are working on a way to make this process continuous. Yes. So I was just saying, we don't have to wait until 2042. What we need to do is to keep exerting pressure for the policy makers to act with speed to save the taxpayers from these wasteful expenditures that we go through every other time. So are you trying to say censors will scrap off some of the expenses that the country is using? No, it will not. This is just an additional cost that the taxpayer has to meet. Of 18 billion, 18.5 18 18 billion. billion. Yes. We yes. could calculate what that money could do to help the employment, unemployment in this Kenya, or to fix the health problem that is taking away our leaders and local people all the time, the cancer thing. We can extrapolate how much this money can help in maybe cautioning the poor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from from their from uh, they are going to to bed empty stomach and mm -hmm. all that. This money can do better things like mm -hmm. like, like more, more than the physical counting. It's too it's too 19th century. It's like it's like minting money and there's no essence on it. That money could be used in better ways. All right. So you, I'm trying to think about the county allocation that the stalemate that has been there between the Senate and the National Assembly. And, I'm, and I want to ask these, and do you think we are failing in one or the other, you know, the National Assembly, do you think, and the Senate, are the leaders failing? Or are, are they really waiting for the census to, first of all, give us the result, then the money can be given? It has nothing to do with the census. The resource allocation, mm -hmm. that is a leadership crisis that Kenya is facing. If you look at Between it, the two houses? It's not just it's between general. the two houses, oh, right. because the people who have the majority in the National okay. Assembly yes. is Jubilee. Mm -hmm. They are not fighting with NASA. Mm. They, yes. are, they are together, they are in, together mm -hmm. in the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. You go to the Senate, the majority Same. leader in the Senate mm -hmm. is not in conflict with the minority mm -hmm. leader. So it's just a tussle between the two houses as to who is more superior. Now, if we had the right kind of leadership, these leaders would have been brought under the same roof mm -hmm. and made to agree for mm -hmm. the sake of <coughs> Wanjiko. Mm -hmm. Because the person that stands to lose is it's the common Mwananchi. Yes. So I would say it's a crisis leadership we are facing, and we should be wary that it will take longer mm -hmm. than it could have because we have the wrong people in those jobs. Mm -hmm. And it's sad because when people were electing the leaders we have today, they believed they were the best and they had our interests at heart. But clearly, if you look at how things are, 
that's not the truth. Do, do, do you think we are messed up with the mentality of my people? Yeah, there's no my people in this thing. We are in a capitalistic society where everybody fights for their own interest. So this is a pure personal interest to war, where they think, uh, the National Assembly thinks if they dominate, then they will get more money, and that money will, they will divide, and all that. Eh? The Senate also thinks we are the senior house, we don't have allocations. By the way, Senate don't have any allocations to spend on the ground. Mm -hmm. Like the CDF, the, the MPs have CDF. CDF yes. the, um, the women reps have enough national affirmation mm -hmm. fund, something yes. like that. Senate don't have one. Mm. So Senate want to make policies that will favor them so that they get some kitty to control. And you know the meaning of controlling. Mm -hmm. It's purported that it's, it's one inches money. Like mm -hmm. CDF is purported to be one inches money. And Alex, sometimes I tried to, to apply for a, a tender at CDF. Hey, the committee there want to meet you at some hotel. You cater for all those bills. They want their share up front. Mm -hmm. The MP wants his share up front. By the time, we, okay, we got the, the, the tender. Mm -hmm. And by the time we hired a tractor, it was maintaining some road. By the time we got a tractor, hired a tractor to do that job, we ran into negatives after the incentives of treating the committee and the MP and all that. We ran into negatives and we had to look for other account to pay this. So it is not national as people's interest it is their own interest i blame it on capitalist society uh, that we are in could we, i elaborate we, on yes. the leadership crisis i'm talking about yes please. you see the governors the senators and the mps all come from somewhere take for instance nairobi county if the governor spent time with the leaders from nairobi mm -hmm. sat with the mps and discussed what priorities exist within this county, in the presence of the senators, they would agree on a lot of things so that when the budget came to the House, the MP would be carrying the interest of the county with him or with her. So would the senator as well. But because our governors want to be some demigods, they don't want to talk to anyone, right. they mm -hmm. are alienated far away from reality. Mm -hmm. The senators for wanting to be relevant, what do they do? They also want to make a lot of noise so that they can be seen to be doing something. And then, because there is a lacuna in our constitution, uh -huh. the National Assembly members do what? Also take advantage of the situation to make themselves as popular as they can. Uh, are we talking about enriching yourself? That's part of it, mm -hmm. but it goes beyond just enriching, enriching yourself. yourselves. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. whether the budget passes or not, they will eat. The still That's the location given. is there. But now there is this other thing about ego, mm -hmm. who has the most power, right. who deserves the most respect, and that comes in the way of them executing yes, the duties. It really affected us once we had the, you know, the first governors you know, with the flagship and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It was really a mess back mm -hmm. in the days. Mm -hmm. I want us to look at the issue of numbers during elections. It usually emerges, you know, my people analogy and who you need to wear to analogy. Yes. And it really affects so much because we end up feeling like who you need to wear to incline to the person. And that person, that mutuao, mm -hmm. doesn't help them in the long run. Mm -hmm. They help themselves. It doesn't, th that person doesn't help them. It's just mutuwe to wear to machinda. And after that to machinda, to kunanja is the next thing, to go Nanja, to Jeliwi, and all that. Mm. And it keeps on, I don't know why we Kenyans don't learn. You rally behind somebody in the name of his our person, and your person doesn't help you. Like you can't freely get to his home because he is your person and all that. They get to what can help them, just what Madiora says. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is two things, this personal gain and remaining relevant to control power. It's all about that. So uh, whether these numbers will favor you, some communities have what, you, some communities have what, it's at the long run hogwash. I, don't th I think this is why they run it. Whether they, because they have some other ways of ob obtaining these figures, they are not using them because maybe those figures cannot be easily manipulated because they are captured in there. No ICT leave footprints. So mm -hmm. if you manipulate it, like they were saying about the, the other elections, of this of opening servers, do you what we could <laughs> could see a lot of things there yeah. because there are footprints there. So they want this manual thing because you can manipulate it. You can change a three to eight. Three is written this way. 
So you just add a, an inverted three and it's eight and you have it. Or add some zeros and you have it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, that prompts me to ask another question of accuracy yeah. during the census. But I want us to first of all dwell on the issue of Mtuetu because it has really affected. Do you think young people are the most affected because that's been alleged so? Young people make the biggest Number percentage in our mm -hmm. population. So when there's a problem, they are the ones who suffer the most. Mm -hmm. The Mtuetu narrative only favors the politician right. when they are caught with their hand in the cooking in the cookie jar. Otherwise, it has no benefit at any other point. They mm -hmm. will tell you mini wenu when they want your vote. And then after that, it will not show up until they are caught doing something they shouldn't mm -hmm. be doing, which is stealing the resources that should be coming to the Monanchi. Mm -hmm. Now, I have been accused of living in utopia for imagining a Kenya where tribalism right. does not play a role in how we elect our leaders, where giving out bribes does mm -hmm. not influence how people are going to vote. But that's where the young people need to step up. There is a cartel that currently runs things in Kenya. And the best way to defeat a cartel is to replace it with a better one. And a better cartel? Yes. All right. And that's what the young people need to realize. That so far the people who have been running this nation are the older generation, the rich, the fat cats. And as long as those are the people making the policies, the young people will never have a say the policies will never favor them. So what the young people need to do is to become selfish. Forget about your tribe. Forget about your class. Come together with other like-minded individuals. Fight to further your interests. Do you think young people decry from the truth? Pardon? Do you think young people decry from the truth? They're trying to run away from the truth. We have done that a lot of times, and politicians know that we are looking for an identity, so they will give it to us. They will tell us, you are from this tribe. You are from that particular social class, and right. you will never amount to much. So what mm -hmm. you need to do is support me, and I will fight for you. But nobody will fight for you. You have to fight for yourself. Right. So come together around whatever activity it is that you do. If you are Masons, organize around that. If you are Hawkers, organize around that and look to bargain. There is safety in numbers. What the young people need to do is to forget their tribes, mm -hmm. is to forget the short-term goals they have. Have a bigger picture. See it and go for it. Wow. That, 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 that makes me... Ogunda, there's, there's a question that... There's something he has mentioned about personal vision and the country's vision. Are we, are, we not, are we living in a time when young people believe in their vision, but they don't want to support the government's vision? Mm, <coughs> I don't agree. What I know is that the, the politicians really know how to camouflage. Camouflaging like the chameleon. Yes. You will see politicians, when uh, youth decry for their agenda, they will quickly join the, the youths in their cry and say, Tuna lelea kietu, sisi kama vijana. Like now they are the vijana now. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. Very fast, very fast. And they, you see like they are, they are, they are uh, crying for you. Yes. Uh, so that they, they, they water down what you do. Like they become part of you mm -hmm. and, uh, and finish you from within. Eh? They will sit down with you, Alex, very mm -hmm. fast sit down with you and say, so sisi kama vijana, let us do it this way. Mm -hmm. So your main vision for coming together and decrying for your help or for your right position, they water it down to what suits them. Mm -hmm. I want to give you the recent example. You, you've seen people saying, Mwananchi wa Kawaidas is saying this, Wanjiku is saying this, so Wanjiku, how will this benefit Wanjiku? The uh -huh. politicians who have come up calling themselves Wanjiku. They are now the Wanjiku saying, Sauti ya Wanjiku. Mm -hmm. The Sauti ya Wanjiku is saying this. And they are the same, same, same politicians who have been enjoying, who have been in the offices for over 10 years. Now they are the Wanjiku. They are watering it down. So when the youth are seen to be like singing the discord, like going against what the government wants, it's not like their fault. It's just because uh, 
these people either want to brand them like they are discordant mm -hmm. or want to join them and water down. Like it's finishing. The, the agenda is finishing. So it's either we finish you from mm -hmm. within or finish you from outside. Are we holding censors for political gains? That's part of it. it census helps the leaders or those in power to divide people. And when you're divided, then you're easy to rule. I personally right. believe that the results from the census mm -hmm. will be used to partition Kenya for political interests. Mm -hmm. Now, about the topic we were talking about, mm -hmm. what we need to do as the Wananchi is to realize that our problem is not ethnicity. Yes. Our problem is poverty. Mm -hmm. Our problem is lack of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Our problem is corruption corruption, a toxic right. business environment. Mm -hmm. That's where we need to direct our anger. That's what we need to organize to eliminate. Mm -hmm. And we cannot be selfish in terms of how we think so that we say we want it now. Yes. We need to think about the generations that will come mm -hmm. after us. That's how we're going to defeat the vices that keep Kenya down. Let's find our thunder. Kenya mm -hmm. can be great. Nobody remembers a Kenya that was so great that everyone had an opportunity before Kenya came into existence. All what right. we need to do is to imagine such a nation because mm -hmm. it's possible. Other nations have done it. Yes. We can do it too. I can say no to bribes. Mm -hmm. I have done it. You can too. Why can't Kenya be great? All right. And unfortunately, gentlemen, we are out of time. But before we go out, there's a question I want us to ask ourselves. Will the government, after the exercise of census, manage to solve the unemployment menace in the country? The same thing they were saying in 2009 when they were counting people, that they mm -hmm. want to use the numbers to plan for us to address the unemployment, whatever. Mm -hmm. What have they done? So what do we expect? Like doing the same process, the same time, failing, and repeating the same, same process and promising what you promised the other time. So it is only who, has, who are foolish to think that this census will solve everything. It uh, that was a previous government. Do you think this the, one will manage? Uh, they were the, I think the same people who are running the show are the same, same people. Right. Maybe, politici maybe political parties may be different, uh -huh. maybe, but the same, same people who are there in 2009 are the same, same people who are here. So what, what do you think? Uh -huh. what do you the government... Uh -huh knows what the numbers are. That's given. But when yeah, you ask we, them about unemployment, mm -hmm. they'll give you a rate that's less than 30%. When we know that out of every 10 Kenyans, mm -hmm. and let's talk about the youth in this case, mm -hmm. only two are employed. The other, in that group, mm -hmm. you have one who has a part-time job. Mm -hmm. You have another one who works half the number of days in a month. Mm -hmm. And then all the others depend on those who are working. So if you want to understand the employment situation or environment in Kenya, counting people is not the solution. What you need to do is to deploy scientific mm -hmm. methods mm -hmm. that are not the same old ones that we have used. I, right. I've, I've had an opportunity to interrogate mm -hmm. the process they will use, and I can tell you it's not going to help give the statistics that will help eliminate unemployment because we live in denial. We yes. say unemployment in Kenya is not over 50%, when we know it's over 50%. Actually, the statistics say it's 40%. Well, they dispute that. Mm -hmm. They give a figure of less than 30%. Mm -hmm. So as long as we live in denial that our young people are not as badly off as the situation says they are, mm -hmm. we will not provide a solution for the problem. Where, where, where do you think we need to rectify in terms of un unemployment in the country? We know that the government needs to create a business environment that helps businesses to, to thrive. Companies mm -hmm. are running out of Kenya because the cost of doing business is too mm -hmm. huge because of corruption. Yes, we are talking about connecting homes to electricity. Yes. But then at what cost? We should make power affordable mm -hmm. to businesses so that we can create the jobs that the young people need. Mm -hmm. Are we doing that? We are not because we are 
one of the highest taxed economies in the world. So we preach water, but then we drink wine when it comes to the same thing. Mm -hmm. Let us walk the talk. Let's not just talk good, but then when it comes to doing the good that we need to do, mm -hmm. we walk back and hide in those cocoons where we are asking, what is in it for me? Yes. Let us do it mm -hmm. for Kenya. Do you think there's a part of young people that is feeling like the government has never even taken care of us? Where we have reached to a place of like young people are feeling like, now we cannot wait for the government anymore. Do you think there's something that is really needed for the government to do so as to bring young people now on board? Because we have been hearing of lack of CVT, you know, divisive politics about the Nile agenda and so much has been happening. And of course, even the other day, someone here was mentioning about the BPI team. There was no young person. In the cabinet, is there any young person? The answer is no. There is talk about expanding the executive where we'll have a president, a deputy president, deputy prime minister, all those positions, mm -hmm. none of those positions is designated for the young people. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm asking the young people to organize, just like the women are doing. Mm -hmm. Let us say there will be nothing for us mm -hmm. if we are not on the table mm -hmm. to talk about what should be for us. Right. So one thing the government needs to do mm -hmm. is to recognize that the youth are not a problem to be solved. We are a resource that needs to be harnessed. Wow. They need to tap onto us. Mm -hmm. And once they do that, Kenya will experience a meteoric rise from this mess we are in right now. The insecurity we talk about every other time, mm -hmm. the drug problem, the gambling, mm -hmm. all those vices will go away mm -hmm. if we recognize that this is a resource that we need to harness for the betterment of our nation. All right. Do you think we're justified to use 18 plus billion shillings for the census? No. <coughs> no, no, no. It can uh -huh. do better things. Uh -huh. say, <coughs> Lewis, uh -huh. say, Jogi mm -hmm. Ejoka, eh? Leuni Emagiloko. It means, Agombo will tell you when he comes here, there's somebody called Raila, uh -huh. Ben the set, he will All tell right. you. He will, mm -hmm. It means mm -hmm. these people are the same. They are just those people. Mm -hmm. I, I'm explaining you to this. This, these people are just this, the same people we saw the other time. The mm -hmm. only difference is that they have changed clothes. All right. Yeah, they are just the other people we saw the other time. All right. They have only changed clothes. Mm -hmm. So I'm advising youths mm -hmm. to concentrate on what can develop them. If it is education, mm -hmm. if it is business, if it is confidence, if it is anything, they concentrate in it. But they don't, should not, as long as they, these are just the other people, it's only clothes that they have changed, mm -hmm. they should not expect much from government. All right. Let's try, the way they say that we should create employment for ourselves, but they say <laughs> so when they seek employment from us, Yes. They, we are the people employing them, uh -huh. but they say we should look, create employment for ourselves <laughs> we'll, we'll be when we are, when we are employing week. them. So as long as we are still, we are, we are still under their mercy. Uh -huh. Let's look on what can develop us. Let, let us not expect much. All right, gentlemen, many thanks for making it. And I really appreciate, of course, keeping of course, me interacted here and, of course, keeping our viewers interacted. Many thanks for your views and, of course, your comments. We might actually be sampling them. And uh, Charles Ireri was Shamata, watching from Shamata. Big up, man. And, of course, we have Samuel Ngugi, Kayole Naivasha, present. Great. Keith Wanjala Simiu. Twele, hey, Cheb. Hey, Chebukaka, Bungoma County. Hey, listening. Where? Ni listening, I'm watching. Okay, sawa, sawa. And of course, we have Keith Wanjara. That one we have gone through. We have, of course, Lit Mass. This is Lit Mass from Kisumu. This census thing is, is brought about to steal our money. All right. Just the other day, they performed, the, they performed rather, the Huduma number. Bonawasi to me, the data they got. Okay. Kunawatu wanafaku wacha miadarati. Yeah, anyway. those guys are high on miadarati. All right, yeah. that, those are some of the views that you guys have been sending over. And we really appreciate your feedback. And of course, we'll be looking at more of these later on at the tail end of the show. Of course, Val is coming up in just a few. Don't touch the dial. Keep it Y254. My name is Karanja Alex.